Hello and welcome to this video for Electric Pages. I'm your host, Robin Mitchell, and today we are here at Electronica in Munich 2024, and it's been a fantastic event, and we are back at the Kyocera stand, and I'm joined by Mark. Nice to Thank meet you. you for having us. And we're going to be looking at another set of demos, and this time I think we're focusing on connectors. Is that right? Is that right? Fantastic. So just before we dive into this, tell the audience who you are, what you do, and what you like to do in your free time. Yeah. So my name is Mark Actis. I'm a marketing manager for Kyocera AVX, looking after the Intercomic products. And what do you like to do in your free time? You've got Sorry? to tell people. What do you like to do in your free time? In my free time, as I like to look after cars. Oh, like what kind of cars? Yeah. You know what kind? Sorry, like um, old cars, older cars. Oh, old, old cars. Also, yeah. do, what, what, do you have a collection at the moment, or are you like? Yeah, yeah, them? yeah. Oh, very, very nice. Very nice. So, please take us through what you guys are showing off today and what the highlights are in this okay. event. So today on this cabinet is like basically the main overview of our automotive product. Yeah. That was the theme for the theme for the booth. Yeah. Uh, is primarily on the left side uh, what we call the custom automotive product. So all these products are customized uh, for our mostly tier one customers. Mm -hmm. And here our main competitors is on core processes and supporting processes to bring the best value for the customer in terms of um, product integration, mechatronic products. So we have combination of core processes like Stamping, plating, yeah. molding, over molding, and stitching, but also many supporting processes like like potting. Or here you can see an addition of an electrolytic capacitor. And one of the core oh, wow. technology that is also across the board later on is press fit. So I I've seen press fits a lot, and I, I was when I, I last embedded world I went to or two embedded worlds ago. I saw a lot of advertising for press fit, and I was surprised to see that they can actually provide more reliability than a soldered connection in terms of holding two parts together. Yeah, well, it's the uh, press fit, same as IDC or crimping, mm. is a cold weld technology. Yeah. So it's basically offering a very high reliable mm. um, connection mm. while you pressing the contact. So you have some elasticity in the eye of the needle design mm. that offers this uh, proper contact force over time and it's pretty much reliable over shock vibration and temperature. And, and we and offer a wide range of um, blade thickness that covers basically the overall range of the automotive connector. And if I remember correctly, or when I was talking to somebody else about press fit connectors, they were also saying that when you come to mount, when you mate everything together at the factory, you can apply very particular forces so you know if it was pressed incorrectly, you know if, you can't, you can't pull it out and try and put it back in because of the pins and deform. So it's kind of like, it adds that level of safety to it as well. Well, it's not meant to be replaced to be honest, because yeah, yeah. And, and the more pins you have, the higher force you need. Mm -hmm. So there's some kind of control you may have on the process, but mm -hmm. it's uh, obviously, there is a bit of learning curve for the customer willing to move away yeah. from SMD yeah. or through all to press fit. But we see that, especially uh, on the German market, this technology has been adopted for 20 to 25 years. And uh, Kyocera AVX has been a key player in this role because we are one of the few suppliers with our own press fit design called yeah. Varipin yeah. that has shown uh, higher reliability over time. Fantastic. Now, something that's caught my eye is that capacitor inside that yes. connector. So this is a connector here. And, yeah, sorry, Karen. Yeah, that, yep. that's what we call a uh, mechatronic product. So mm. this is basically uh, um, 2K over molding. So we basically have the first over molding stage of the contact, and then yep. we have a second over molding stage yep. to mold the gasket. Yep. And the electrolytic capacitor is just pressed in. We have an IDC contact, like on this standard product here. Well, it just consists of inserting the wire or the lead into a slot, and you create a cold joint, same as the press Oh, it's a cold joint, so it's not as well. So what advantage would that bring to someone who's needing a custom connector? You mean this? The, 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 the use of a capacitor, or, or the fact that you can integrate components into the connector itself? Well, the more integration you have, the less operation customer has mm. to implement on their process. So, yeah. I mean, we have some customer that would like to assemble the capacitor themselves. In this particular case, I think we have been convincing to the customer that the best solution was that they can get a, a pre-assembled solution as much as possible. And this is not visible here, but we have multiple product offering where we have, instead of having these this large headers or connectors, we have integrated housing. It means that instead of having a top cover and a bottom cover, the customer only have a bottom cover, the yeah. rest is fully integrated. So integration is always key in terms of 
cost saving and reliability. Yes, one thing that's actually caught my eye are these dual entry card edges and how they're going through the PCB itself. Could you talk, could you talk a bit more about that? Yeah, so we see a strong traction from all industry, including automotive on card edge. Yeah. While a few years ago it could have seemed like a macho technology, mm. but it's, we still see a lot of, of demand. The unique feature of this, uh, what we call dual, dual entry card edge, is yeah. that you can have the same connector that can be mated as a top entry yeah. or bottom entry. Yeah. Like typically, this standard series 9159650, here is the vertical mount or top mount, and we have another bottom entry solution. This one, it's one single connector that can do both. So either bottom or top, it exactly. doesn't matter. And you, and, oh, that's really interesting. So, so but, but why do you think that type of design, because these, these are automotive grade, aren't they? Well, it's not. It's suitable for automotive. It's not qualified, but it is. But, but it's suitable though. For, yes. For, for, yes right. and, and so, why, why do you think that's becoming popular? Because I think you're saying that card edges are becoming popular in automotive. Uh, I mean, overall, whatever it's card edge or what we call the compression type, or, or originally was named battery connector, which are both one piece solution instead of traditional two piece. The then main benefit for all customer is really an easy assembly process. Hmm. Sometimes you can even do blind mate or when you have a, a difficult access into a device, yeah. that, that's pretty convenient. And, and, and it's pretty small package and yeah. reliable. We are using copper barium contact, yeah. gold plated. That has been um, proven technology for multiple <clears throat> passenger compartment application in automotive and transportation. Now, another thing that's caught my eye are capacitor holders. Now, oh. the way I would understand it is that in most cases, you usually just solder your components in. So my question is, what kind of application is what application is asking for a, a, a holder for a capacitor, and why does that give it an advantage? Well, you have two cases. Okay, the first one is basically customer get, willing to get rid of the, the manual uh, soldering process and soldering process, or even sometimes uh, an additional step of wave soldering just for this one needed component to all. Okay. Oh, that's so, a good. Oh, because that oh, because the capacitor holder is SNT. Yes, yes. Oh, I see. I should have started with that. So that's the main a good point. point yeah. is that you will assemble by standard yeah. pick and place process and SNT process the holder, and later you just have a basic mechanical press to insert the capacitor. And, the, and again, it's that cold well press bit, so you can just yes, pop it straight again, in. It's like, and again, IDC, IDC, and, and, uh, and yes, and again, it's like you say, you know, it's the, the wave soldering process is expensive, and in many cases, the wave soldering process would be incompatible with double sided SNT boards. Yes. So, if you and, and and trying to find an SMT capacitor of that size is well, let's be honest, practically impossible, and it's going to get knocked over and pull the pads off. So, if you if you have a much larger through hole capacitor, you see, put it on this side, use an SMT part, it can be pick and placed, two sides, no wave soldering, and you can pop your capacitor straight in. Yeah, and you you, you save some gluing process, some bending of the leads. Obviously, there's always pro and cons. You, yeah. add, you add to the cost, but usually, I think the customer the, the, that have this kind okay, of concern. Uh, yeah, yeah, but even as an engineer, I can tell you that the bomb cost of adding a capacitor holder is going to be a, a lot less than trying to wave solder that board with just because one capacitor needs it. It's going to be a lot easier to do that. No, that's correct. Yeah. And there is also a technical benefit. So mm. we have for more than 20 years um, some running products uh, from the custom automotive area yeah. where we had customer willing to lay down the capacitor into a travel because they find out that during a crash or an accident, it was a failure rate, which was too much anyway, that the solder lead would break. Oh, because if the, yeah, if the board is like this and the capacitor is kind of like, uh, uh, sort of like perpendicular to the board, you've got a lot of stress. A lot of stress force, uh, stresses and forces go acting this way. If it's like this, it's kind of like, the, uh, the, 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 what you call it, the turning moment isn't in, sort of like in the direction of the, of, of the force, that kind of makes sense. You know, it's like, it's yeah. not going to flip over when it makes an impact, it's going to be kind of like level set. Yeah, but yeah. even if you lay down with the soldering, you have this risk. Mm. So I think um, what is important to mention is that this product will be in production end of this year. So yep. that's really a breaking news for Electronica. And so, and so and uh, uh, specific, specifically the SMT capacitor holder. Yes, yes, exactly. As this is the part where we're going to be focusing on. Exactly. Fantastic. And um, I'm really thrilled that we have this product today because that's also showing the good work we are doing with the other division, like my colleagues will probably introduce later, the SuperCap. 
even if this although is compatible with both SuperCAP and electricity capacitor. Well, I can, I, can, I can actually think of a few other components that, that could that could do with a kind of holder like this. Something in inductors because they can get quite large. You don't want to solder those through. Right. IDC works also with inductors. Mm. Uh, we have demonstrated that you can even pierce the enamel copper wire. Oh, and, you've got and, the wire ones here, haven't you? And for yeah. any other little component, some customer would use the standard IDC here because it's the same cold weld technology that you have here, here, and from the history on automotive yeah. on any connection of the electrolytic capacitor. And just a quick question about these cables here. You, you've got you've got an example of the, the, the I'm not sure what you call it, that, the, the part that actually grabs the cable and cuts it and like, holds it the, the, on the left side. The IDC contact itself. Yeah. So you've got the contact on the left side. Those boxes on the, the next one, are they the, the shroud that kind of goes over it to protect it? It's an optional cap. Optional cap. Yeah. That brings a, a better strain relief. Yeah. And also can help with the process because if you want to apply the wire directly to the mm -hmm. contact, that's the you cheapest have, solution. You have to push it in correctly. Don't you, you need to have a special tool. So yeah. it's not a fancy tool, but you need to have a special tool anyway yeah. and some accurate pin position or mm. position tolerance. With the cap, it makes it easy. Mm. And also for customer willing to have insulation, that's yeah. an, op an option. But that's, that's purely optional. And, and so I'm guessing that obviously, all, like, like I said, of all the parts here, the one you're most excited about is the capacitor holder. Oh, that's true, but we have some very interesting uh, product oh. here from the fine pitch offering. So we have well-known um, product like FFC, FPC with a wide range of products, including uh, Autolog for more reliable connection mm. on the field. Uh, we have a um, new two-piece FFC FPC connector, which is just going a bit backwards because typically FFC FPC is one-piece connector. Okay, you connect directly the flexible cable into the connector. Here we have two-piece. You assemble the flexible cable into a connector, and this connector will make two headers. The main purpose is that this is the target application is BMS, and we know that most of the automotive customer they will need a ruggedized connection solution that can survive any type of operator. You know, the funny thing is, I, I, I'm very familiar with those cables, and the one thing I've always noticed is that the cable tends to be the exposed part, and you only have like the, the, the board connector. And the number of times those flexible connectors break on that edge because they're flexing like this, and they and, 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 and you've only got that, so like the one thing. So when you, when you try and disconnect that, you, you pull up the whole ribbon itself, and that almost always cracks or tears on the sides. But with the connector that you've got, the header, you can now disconnect that part without taking Without putting stress yeah, and strain you, on that. You are getting back yeah. to a very traditional two-piece connector mm. with a male and a female yeah. and a proper locking mm. mechanism. That makes it more I mean, reliable mm. if you have untrained people working on the connector. And, and typically, I had this discussion with a customer. Mm. Because it can be assembled by anybody in the production area, this is too small to be handled by hand. Mm. They kind of appreciate that kind of solution. And so, before we wrap this video up, of all the things that you've shown me today, of all of them, which one do you think is going to have the biggest impact for your business going forward? Well, my hope is you're, you're going it's, to it's, it's still <laughs> this one, and I'm again very happy that uh, we can all share, gain some share together with the other product group because obviously we present this uh, product with KVX SuperCap or KVX yeah. Electrolytic, but ultimately. This product will be compatible with all type, major type of capacitor on the market. A lot, because a lot of capacitors have the same dimensions anyway. A lot of the time, or well, very similar dimensions. I so. find out, yes, mm. but the, on the tolerance, it's a bit tricky sometimes. Mm. So there's a little tweaks. Which yeah, is oh, no problem I, when you solder, but when you have to have yeah. an accurate positioning into an IDC slot, yeah, it's 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 a bit tricky. But we came up with a wide range of product where we can adjust the, the pitch, etc., to really accommodate majority of the cap on the market. Of all the, I have to admit though, of all the connectors I like, and the one I'm actually eyeing is one of these dual entry card edges where it actually goes through the thing. And, and the reason why is because I'm actually designing a product right now and I'm thinking that would actually be perfect because we need a way of like putting cards vertically, but you know, vertical M2 keys, they, they, they're kind of hard, far and few between. And I'm yep. not too reliant on them. So this is a really interesting solution for me. So before we wrap this video up, I've got the final question for you, which is for the audience who are watching this video, if they want to get involved with the solutions that you presented today, what would you recommend that they do? Oh, so we have multiple channels. You can reach out to our um, sales representative. We have a lot of FAE on the field. Or you can basically directly contact the uh, uh, marketing group. But otherwise, we have a lot of information on our website, which is currently being refurbished. We have more and more documentation. 
white papers. Uh, you can contact us through the website. There is a very strong point from our management that we reply in 24 hours to 48 hours. So we are usually pretty much responsive and most of the customers acknowledge um, good support and reliability, which is, I think, the best we can offer, which we try to offer every day. Great. Thank you ever so much for taking the time to see us today. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you very much.